Hello everyone, today I'm meeting two cosmologists at the University of Geneva who recently developed a method to measure an extremely strange and fascinating phenomenon, the distortion of time. Nice to meet you. Hi everyone, my name is Camille, I am a cosmologist and I am a professor at the University of Geneva. And I am Daniel, a PhD of Camille. So, please enlighten us, what does it mean that time is distorted? So, the distortion of time is an effect predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity. So, Einstein postulated that space and time are not absolute. There is not one unique notion of time, but rather different people see time pass at a different rate. So, first, when he proposed his theory of special relativity, he showed that time passes at different rates for people moving at different speeds. And then, 10 years later, where he extended the theory to include gravity and to build the theory of general relativity, he showed that time also passes at different rates for clocks sitting at different distances from a massive object, like, for example, the center of the Earth. That's very strange. How can we picture this? Picturing the distortion of time is actually not that difficult. We can imagine the universe as an immense tablecloth, and when we put a massive object in it, we distort it. We create a distortion of space, what we physicists call a gravitational well. Now, what Einstein predicted is that the presence of this mass does not only distort the spatial geometry of our universe, but that it also affects the passing of time. This means that a clock ticks at a different rate if it is away from the potential well or inside the potential well. And actually, the deeper in the potential well the clock is, the slower time passes. This sounds a bit like science fiction. Is that the reality? I agree. This is extremely strange. And actually, the first time I heard about it was in high school. I had this amazing physics teacher who one day decided to talk to us a little bit about physics beyond what we learn at school. And so he explained to us the distortion of time. And I found that extremely fascinating. And actually, it was one of the key factors that motivated me to become a physicist, because I wanted to understand how such a strange phenomenon could exist. Great! But has this distortion of time been measured? Is that a proven fact or just a fascinating prediction? Amazingly, it has been measured. It was indeed one of the key predictions from general relativity, and measuring it was a great success of the theory, a really strong evidence in favor of general relativity. So there are two methods to measure the distortion of time. The first one consists in comparing the time from two atomic clocks that are sitting at different distances from the Earth. And these measurements have all confirmed with great precision the validity of general relativity. And actually today, the distortion of time is accounted for in a very known and widely used system, the Global Positioning System, or GPS. If we wouldn't account for the distortion of time in the GPS, the system would simply fail. It wouldn't be precise enough. Isn't this also the effect that is depicted in the film Interstellar? The person close to a black hole ages less than the one away from it? Indeed, it is. Okay, so. A difference in the ticking of clocks is the first method to measure time distortion. You said there was another one? Yes, the second method consists in looking at the reddening of light when it escapes a gravitational potential. As you know, light comes in different colors, and we can represent light as a wave which is propagating through space. Now, as for any wave, we can associate a frequency to it, which is related to the time that passes between two different crests. And the larger this time is, the smaller the frequency, and in the visible spectrum, the redder the light is. OK, so a rainbow is just a collection of light with different frequencies. But how does this relate to time distortion? Well, since inside a gravitational potential, time passes at a different rate, a ray of light emitted from inside the gravitational potential with a given frequency, meaning a given color, will change its frequency or its color when it escapes the gravitational potential. This is because the time between two crests changes as the light goes up in the potential, so the light becomes redder and redder when it escapes the gravitational potential. This is what Einstein called gravitational redshift. The light is shifted to the red, redshifted, due to the presence of the gravitational potential. Fantastic! And this has been measured as well, this redshift or reddening of light? Yes, it has. In fact, uh, it was Eddington the first who had this idea. 
he proposed to look at the stars that are called white dwarfs, which are very compact objects. These stars create a gravitational potential which is quite deep, so it is possible to measure the reddening of light that escapes these stars to reach us. And indeed, uh, this method proved the validity of general relativity. Recently, astrophysicists have also measured the reddening of light escaping from much bigger objects, the clusters of galaxies, which contain thousands of them. And again, Einstein was proved right. OK, but then why do you still want to measure the distortion of time? What are you doing differently as cosmologists? Uh, the difference is that us cosmologists, we want to test general relativity at the scale of the universe. Because you see, there is one big mystery in our universe, which is the fact that the expansion of the universe is accelerating as a function of time. We have observed that the space between all the galaxies in our universe is increasing as a function of time. And what is strange is that this expansion is becoming faster and faster as the universe evolves. And we don't know why. So we have currently two possible scenarios to explain this acceleration. The first one is that there is in our universe a new form of energy that we call dark energy that has the property to make the expansion of the universe accelerate as a function of time. And the second possibility is that maybe general relativity is wrong at very large distances and that the true theory of gravity would be such that it would make the expansion of the universe accelerate. Right. So that's why you need to test general relativity at large scales then, to understand if it is correct. Yes, exactly. And one key test that we want to perform is to measure the distortion of time at cosmological distances. So this means that we want to look at distortion created not by a single object like a star or a galaxy, not even by a cluster of galaxies, but really a distortion of very large extension of the order of 50 megaparsec, which corresponds to, 20 to the 10 to the 21 kilometer, if you can imagine what it is. So a distortion with an extension that would take photons 100 million years to travel across. Because it is really at those scales that general relativity may fail and that we may see the signature for a new theory of gravity. Wow, but how can you do that? Well, that's not easy, of course. The main problem to measure this is that the gravitational redshift, the effect we are after, is not the only that causes the reddening of light. There are other two effects that have the same impact on light. The first one is the expansion of space. When light travels through our expanding universe, it is stretched by the expansion, and therefore it inevitably becomes redder and redder. And the further away we look, the larger the reddening is. And the second effect is the Doppler effect. If the source that emits light, a star or a galaxy, is moving with respect to you, this motion also changes the color of the light. In the same way as the sound of an ambulance changes when the ambulance goes away or towards you? Exactly. If the source is moving towards you, the light becomes bluer, while if the, if the source is moving away from you, the light becomes redder. Now the problem is that the effect uh, due to the expansion and the effect due to the velocity are both much bigger than the effect due to the presence of the gravitational potential, the one we want to measure. So we had to be a bit clever and develop a method to isolate the latter effect from the other two larger effects. And is it possible? Right now it is not. The data that we have currently are not good enough to allow us to measure the distortion of time at very large distances. But there are amazing surveys that are planned for the coming years like DESI, Euclid or the Square Kilometer Array that will collect more data. And with Daniel we were able to design a method to measure the distortion of time for the first time at cosmological distance with this new data. Our method relies on the different symmetries between the different effects that change the color of light. Ah oh, yes, physicists love exploiting symmetries. Indeed, and in this case, symmetries are crucial. The essence of our method is to compare the redshift of light emitted by a galaxy which is sitting at the bottom of the gravitational potential with the redshift of light emitted by a galaxy which is sitting in front of the bottom of the potential and a galaxy which is sitting behind, behind the front of the gravitational potential. And by doing that, by doing this comparison, we are able to get rid of the redshift due to the expansion of the universe 
and we are also able to get rid of the Doppler redshift due to the velocity of the galaxy. And we really isolate the redshift that we are after, the one which is due to the distortion of time. So with this method, for the first time, we will be able to measure the distortion of time at very large distances. And if the measured distortion is smaller or larger than predicted by general relativity, then it means that Einstein was wrong and that the true theory of gravity is something else. It's fascinating. Thank you for these explanations about the distortion of time. We hope you enjoyed our video about the research that we do at the University of Geneva. Please comment, share, like and subscribe to the channel Cosmic Blue Shift. More videos will come. Stay tuned. Bye bye. Bye bye.